Hi you guys, welcome back. And of course, if you are new to this channel, welcome. My name is Tracy Erickson, and in this episode of Halloween Spooktacular, we are going to talk about Houdini versus the housewife. And this is the story of Marjorie, the witch of Lime Street. Stay tuned. Margaret, the witch of Lime Street, is a witch who lived in Boston, and she was actually skilled in seances and communicating with the dead, especially her brother Walter, who died in 1911 in a tragic accident with railway cars. The story of Marjorie, the witch of Lime Street, is actually a story of Mina Crandon. Marjorie's real name is Mina Crandon, and Mina and her family moved from Canada to Boston in the early 1900s when Mina was only a teenager. In her earlier years, Mina married a grocer by the name of Earl Rand, and she and Earl had a son, and that marriage ended when Mina actually had to go in for a surgery, and that is when she met Dr. Leroy Crandon. So soon after the surgery, Mina ended up leaving her husband, Earl, and getting together with Dr. Crandon. Mina's new husband, Dr. Leroy Crandon, actually became interested in spiritualism when he went and heard a lecture by Sir Oliver Lodge in 1920. And his interest in spiritualism is believed to be what caused Mina Crandon to also become interested in spiritualism herself. So Mina ended up speaking and communicating to, or she was believed to speak and communicate with the dead, with her most prominent sitter coming in being her mother, who would always communicate with Mina's dead brother, Walter. And it was so convincing, in fact, that even Mina's mother truly did believe that Walter was speaking to her during these sessions. Communicating with the dead and doing seances became a regular thing for Mina Crandon. And Mina was very happy keeping herself busy with these seances because not only was she very interested in spiritualism herself, but it is believed that she, it helped her um, husband, Dr. Crandon, to remain interested in her as well, since he was always known to kind of move along from wife to wife. So some do believe that this spiritualism that Mina was practicing was simply a way to remain interesting in the eyes of her husband. But the spiritualism also keeps Mina's mother happy because Mina's mother is able to communicate with Walter, her dead son, which actually brings her a lot of peace. Mina's private seance practice actually started to become the talk of the town. So people began to gossip about Mina and the experiences that they had during her seances. And as the word traveled throughout town, it actually reached the ears of William McDougall of Harvard. And that is when Mina's fame really began to take off. So William McDougall of Harvard actually began to do investigations to prove if Mina really is the medium that she claims to be. So as Mina Crandon was being paraded around to all these different spiritualists and investigators, it didn't take long for her to actually be set up with the meeting with 
Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who is the writer of the Sherlock Holmes books. Now, Arthur, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle actually stopped writing Sherlock Holmes books and began really diving into spiritualism as well, as he was very, very interested in the subject of the afterlife and basically of all things metaphysical. So his focus in life had changed, and therefore he truly did want to meet this Mina Crandon. In 1924, Scientific American held a contest to see if any alleged mediums out there could actually scientifically prove their mediumship. And if so, that medium could earn themselves $2,500 as, as an award for their skills at mediumship. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle is the one who actually talked Mina Crandon into um, putting herself into this contest. And Mina, wanting to keep herself very private, actually entered herself under the name Marjorie, which is where we get Marjorie, the Witch of Lime Street. And so it turns out that Marjorie is just a variation of Mina's middle name. Now, the contest actually had an investigative committee, which included J. Malcolm Bird, the magazine's managing editor, Dr. William McDougall of Harvard University, Dr. Daniel F. Comstock, formerly of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, Dr. Walter Franklin Prince of the, of the Society for Psychial Research, um, we also have Hereward Carrington, champion of Eusapia Palladino. And of course, lastly on this committee is Houdini himself. Over the course of 47 seances, this committee of individuals actually saw so many wonders at the hands of Marjorie. They saw ectoplasm actually coming out in limbs from her body. They saw a fingerprint actually materialize before them, which is thought to be the fingerprint of her dead brother, Walter. They also had objects thrown at them and moved, and table turning took place, as well as many other wonders, all while this investigative committee looked on. The committee actually came to the decision all at once, it was a unanimous decision um, between everyone who was present that Marjorie should be the winner and awarded the $2,500 from Scientific American. When it came time for the committee to let Houdini in on this uh, news that we have a winner, a true medium by the name of Marjorie, the Witch of Lime Street, Houdini wanted nothing to do with it. Houdini, you see, is a very busy showman. So, of course, he didn't have time to participate in all of these 47 previous seances that Marjorie had with the rest of the investigative committee. Therefore, Houdini made it his very own personal business to try to prove that Marjorie is, in fact, a fraud. So, on July 24th of 1924, Houdini headed over to Boston and met with Marjorie, the Witch of Lime Street, that night for a seance. So, Houdini heard all about this bell that would ring on command, and it was believed that Walter, the ghost of Mina's brother, is the one who was ringing the bell that was inside of a box. So on that first night, Houdini was sure to sit next to Margaret, Marjorie as this seance was taking place. And as he sat there, he was sure to hold her hand and place his foot upon her foot as well. That way, he would try to catch if Marjorie was up to tricks of her own. Now, it was claimed by Houdini that he felt her move her foot at just the right time for the bell to begin ringing. And so, in 
uh, seances following this, Harry Houdini went as far as cutting off the circulation to the lower part of his leg so that when the seance time came at night, that night, his leg was so swollen and tender that he thought it would make it easier for him to detect any sudden movement, no matter how small, based on the tenderness of this swollen leg. Houdini claimed to feel movements from Marjorie the Witch once again, and his arguments were always met with more and more seances trying to prove that Marjorie is in fact a successful medium. Because Houdini was making such a big deal about these very small movements being made on Marjorie's part, he and the committee decided to devise a form of a restraint so that it could, you know, remove any doubt that Marjorie is the one making these noises and apparitions happen. So, um, Houdini actually informed Marjorie of this plan in a letter, and in that letter it states, I know that with your willingness, you are ready to try any of the various controls and assure you that I will be agreeable to anything, where eventually no one can question the control. At no time would I permit the committee to harass or put you to an inconvenience of physical discomfiture. Harmony must reign, but the control at all times should be satisfactory to all present. Fair enough, right? So, they decided to try the seance once again, but this time Marjorie would be placed in a very much more extreme restraint. And this restraint was in the form of a black box with little holes for her head and her arms and legs to come out of the box. And according to the book Chasing Ghosts by Mark Hartsman, um, it says here that once Houdini had Marjorie secured inside the box with her hands being held by himself and Prince, the manifestations ceased to exist except for the voice of Walter. The spirit accused Houdini of trying to deceive the committee by sneaking a carpenter's folding ruler into the cabinet before Marjorie entered, giving her a tool that could be used to create telekinetic effects. And of course, Houdini said he in fact did not place this ruler inside of the box and he claimed with the ruler being only six inches, it is very likely that Marjorie herself smuggled that ruler in, right? But it turns out that William Lindsay Gresham wrote a book in 1959. The book was called Houdini, The Man Who Walked Through Walls speaks of Houdini and his assistant. So it says here that in the book, it claims that years after Houdini's death, his assistant, Jim Collins, was asked about the ruler controversy. According to Gresham in this book, Jim Collins smiled wryly. I checked it in the box myself. The boss told me to do it. He wanted to fix her good. So, according to William Lindsay Gresham's 1959 book, it states there that Jim Collins was Houdini's assistant and that he was asked by his boss to put the ruler in there. And he stated that he chucked the ruler into the box at just the right time, basically behind everybody's back. So, during that final seance, the voice of Walter actually yelled and screamed at Houdini and said, Houdini, you goddamn son of a bitch, get the hell out of here and never come back. And Walter shouted this with an outburst that was intensified with a threat. And that threat was, I put a curse on you now that follows you every day until the day you die. And also, Marjorie felt really betrayed by Houdini because in her heart of hearts, she knew that she didn't place the ruler inside of the box. But Houdini 
still went on boasting, telling everybody that he knew he had her tricked and trapped. So there was really wasn't much that she could do to prove him wrong in the world. In the end, Marjorie did not receive the $2,500 cash award for her mediumship, but it just didn't stop her from communicating with Walter and continuing to do the spiritual things that she was doing anyway. The spirit of Walter actually remained angry with Houdini as well. And since Mina Crandon went on with her seances, it was actually again in August of 1926 where she had a seance and Walter expanded on his threat to Houdini, this time by declaring, Houdini will be gone by Halloween. And so, oddly enough, Houdini did die. He died on October 31st, 1926. So he literally died on Halloween, and Walter said he'd be gone by Halloween. So according to the book Chasing Ghosts, it also states that a resentful Leroy Crandon later said the entire investigation was largely a period of comedy. He took issue with each of the members, noting that Houdini came with his mind made up before he started. And that is my opinion as well. It just screams egomaniac all over it that Houdini was too busy to actually attend 47 seances with Marjorie, only to be told that a committee truly believed that she was a real thing medium. But that was threatening to Houdini. Therefore, he just had to prove her wrong. And he went about any way of doing it as well. Now, I also find it funny to note that Harry Houdini and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle were very good friends in life. But the thing that caused kind of attention in their friendship was Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's belief in spiritualism. It always bothered Houdini when people believed in things that couldn't be seen. And so Houdini always tried to prove uh, Arthur wrong um, anytime that he liked a medium or, or tried to follow what the medium was saying. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's wife, Lady Doyle, actually um, revealed that she herself is a medium, and Houdini didn't believe her either. But it was Lady Doyle who was speaking to a spirit named Phineas, and Phineas claimed to be a spirit in a time before times, and he is from a land called Ur. You are. Now, what Phineas said on April 12th 1925 was Houdini is doomed, doomed, doomed. He will not be allowed to stand in the way of God's progress. So, of course, with his death occurring on October 31st of 1926, and that particular um, statement being made in April of 1925, it was only a little over a year, and Houdini really was doomed. Houdini was such a skeptic, in fact, that he took it all the way to the United States Congress in February and May of 1926. So, he actually served as a star witness at a hearing before the House D.C. Committee on a bill to prohibit fortune-telling for fees. Obviously, you had tons of mediums, astrologers, tarot card readers, and all the different types of mediums come out against this proposed bill. Luckily, it failed there, but that only proves that Harry Houdini is actually very committed to his skepticism over mediumship. So, knowing that and everything that we've talked about today, what do you guys think about this? The housewife versus Houdini. And do you agree with Harry Houdini? Do you believe that Mina Crandon was simply lying about all of these different things and using these little tactics as a way to trick everybody? 
Or do you believe that Harry Houdini has a thing about being a skeptic for spiritualism and really just wanted to prove her wrong before he even met her? Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. The constant need to defend herself and to perform on the spot with spirit and all of this unwanted fame all led to a downward spiral in Marjorie's life. So Mina Crandon actually died at the age of 53 on November 1st, 1941, following a bout with alcoholism. It is believed that this downward spiral in the face of all of this fame is what caused her demise in the end. Well, that about wraps it up for this video. So if you like this video, be sure to click that like button and share this video with all your friends out there. And of course, if you are a viewer but not yet a subscriber, I am inviting you now to click subscribe down below. And once you have subscribed, you can then click that notification bell so that you can be notified each and every time I upload a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching and spending your time with me. I love you and I'll see you next time. Bye.